The detection phase is when SEOMAP attempts to detect what technologies are powering the database and whether there are any SQL injections that the tool can find. So that makes this section a pretty important section to understand in order to run effective tests. So in this lesson, we'll explore all of the available options, starting with dash dash level equals level. Now we've mentioned a level option a few times already in prior lessons, because this option decides what tests are performed and what tests are not performed. And so as a result, it actually influences what some of the other options may be able to do. So with that, let's take a look at each level. And you can navigate to this page in order to view both the payloads, but also at which levels they get triggered. So let's start with level one. This is the most basic level where SQL map tests all of the get and post parameters. So regardless of the level that we choose, get and post parameters will always be tested by default unless we specifically tell SQL map not to. Then we have level two, and at this level, we start to look at the HTTP cookie headers for SQL injection vulnerability. And remember that we can also set cookie headers manually with dash dash cookie equals cookie information, and that we can use dash dash param dash exclude equals exclude to bypass testing of certain cookies that match the given regular expression. We can also skip testing the cookie headers by using dash dash skip equals cookies, or by using dash p and just not including cookies, even if we have this level enabled. Next, we have level three, and this level adds two new types of headers into the mix. We have both HTTP user agent and HTTP referrer headers. And so by including this level, we are now testing for level one, plus level two, and plus level three. Then we have level four, and level four seems to mostly implement more payloads for certain types of techniques, not necessarily new headers to test as compared to the other levels. For example, if we look inside of the Boolean blind file, we will see not only the payloads, but actually which levels the payloads get triggered. And so if we search and filter for level four, we will see MySQL Boolean based blind parameter replace with make set, then MySQL Boolean blind based again, but parameter replace with ELT, and then the same thing, but bool times int. And then after that, we even have a Postgres example and a Microsoft SQL server example. And again, all these are triggered starting at level four and above. You could actually do the same thing for error-based, stack queries, time blind, and union query, and look inside of those in order to see which payloads get triggered starting at level four. Now, inline query only includes tests for levels one through three, so you won't find any levels four in that file. Then finally, we have the highest level, which is level five, and this level adds the HTTP host headers to test for SQL injections, as well as additional checks that we can also look for in each respective file. Now, one thing to keep in mind, as you increase the levels, you will also be increasing the number of requests. So if you set it to level five, for example, it will take significantly longer than if you choose level two. And if we look at the documentation, we can see that they estimate greater than 1,000 requests if you are at level five, level four is about 500 to 1,000 requests, and then so on. Now, of course, this is an estimation, but it goes to show that there can be a significant increase in requests depending on the level that you choose. Now, the next option is similar to the first, but instead of dictating which headers and techniques to include in tests, this option looks at the risk levels. And we're talking about dash dash risk equals risk. So certain payloads that can be used to test for SQL injections can actually be destructive because they can make modifications to databases and their entries, or they can take down databases by using resource intensive queries. And in many situations that could be unacceptable since it would go outside of your testing scope and it could damage the business potentially. That's why the authors of SQL map added three different levels. The first level, level one, is intended to not cause any damage to databases and applications. It is the least offensive of all levels, so it's a really great place to start, and it is the default value. Next, we have level two, and level two starts to add heavy time-based SQL injection queries, so this can slow down the database or even potentially take it down, so be careful when using this risk level. And finally, the third and final risk level, level three, adds 
or based SQL injection tests. And the reason that this is in the higher risk level is because injecting or payloads in certain queries can actually lead to updates of entries in database tables and changing data in a database is never what you want to do unless you are testing a throwaway environment and database. And if you were to do that in production environment, it could have disastrous consequences. So only use this risk level if you know what you're doing and if you have explicit permissions and if everyone on the team or your client is on the same page as to what this risk level does. Now to get a comprehensive list of which payloads get executed at which risk levels, you can again take a look at all the default payloads that SQMAP uses here. You can also add your own or make modifications, by the way, as you become a more advanced user of SQLMAP and to customize it to either your needs or your client's needs.